Hey, what's up everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to sample your hardware synths using the auto sampler in Logic Pro. Now, this is really cool because it allows you to take any of your hardware synthesizers, take any hardware synth patch on any hardware synth that has a MIDI input, and you can convert it into a sampler patch in Logic Pro so that you no longer have to load up and, and set up your hardware synth for that patch. So if there are a few patches on your hardware instruments that you use all the time and you want to store them in Logic in Sampler and not have to use your hardware anymore, this is really helpful for that. Now, I already talked about using the external instrument plugin in my Ultimate Guide to Logic Pro episode 66, where I sort of do a deep dive on how to set up the external software instrument plugin. So I'm not going to rehash this too deep, but I'll just give you a quick overview of my setup. So real quick, here's what my setup and routing looks like. I have an Alessis V25 MIDI controller going into my Mac over USB. Then I have a USB to MIDI cable going from my Mac over to my hardware synth, which in my case is a Yamaha Motif Rack XS. Then I have the TRS audio outputs from the Motif Rack going into line level inputs on my audio interface, which is an Apogee Symphony I.O. And then the Symphony I.O. is returning audio signal back to my Mac and into Logic over Thunderbolt. Depending on what type of hardware synth you're working with in your setup, your setup may vary. So you may not even need a USB to MIDI cable if your synth is newer, because some of these newer synths might support MIDI input and or audio output over a single USB cable. So in that case, the USB to MIDI cable wouldn't be necessary. But this is just a snapshot of my specific setup. So first what you do is you create a new software instrument. On that software instrument track, you're gonna load up the external instrument plugin. This is under uh, utility. And then here in MIDI destination, you're going to select uh, whatever USB uh, MIDI device you're using to get uh, the MIDI signal over to your hardware synth. Then you set your audio input. This is like the audio return from the motif rack. You can set your uh, volume adjustments here. And if everything's set up properly, you should be able to arm the track and then uh, play the hardware synth with any connected MIDI controller. So this is a patch on my Motif Rack XS that's called Trance Attack. And I want to store this in uh, in Sampler and, and create my own sort of software version of this patch. Now, what you want to do with the patch is double check a few things. One, does it have round robin, meaning does it have alternating samples? If this one does, I can't tell. And two, does it have velocity layers? So this one sounds like it does have some velocity layers. So what we want to do is we want to not only sample every single note within a certain range, we also want to sample different velocities so that the instrument sounds just as good as it does on hardware in sampler. Okay, so that's my external instrument setup. Next, what you're gonna do is on the audio effects on that track, you're going to load up auto sampler, and this is also under utility. And what you're gonna do in auto sampler is you're going to set the starting note and the ending note. Um, I'm gonna go down to, I think C0, and I'm gonna go all the way up to G6. And then what you can do is you can set how often you want to sample. So if I say sample every six semitones, this is only going to sample every tritone or every, uh, you know, augmented fourth or diminished fifth. So the lower this number, the more notes are going to be sampled. Now, if you put this on one semitone, every single note on the keyboard is going to be sampled and you're gonna get the highest quality uh, sampled instrument. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to one semitone because I really wanna get every single note. Now, for round robin, this is the number of alternating samples uh, you want to sample. Um, I'm just gonna say no for this. I'm just gonna have one sample per velocity layer. So I'm gonna keep that off. By the way, choosing round robins is, uh, and sampling multiple round robins will exponentially increase the amount of time it takes to sample the instrument. 
You can set your uh, sustain time, but I believe it automatically will trim the sustain if the, uh, if the sound doesn't uh, last uh, a full 10 seconds. And then you can set how many velocity layers you want and where you want those velocity layers to be. I'm gonna go ahead and use three velocity layers. And then I'll just set the range of my three velocity layers down here. And it's nice when you click on it. It auditions the note at the shown velocity. So maybe I'll pull this one down a bit more. Yeah, okay, so I've got sort of a soft, medium, and loud. Now, if this is a looping instrument, like a, a, an instrument that sustains, you may wanna turn on the auto loop uh, option here, uh, but this is just a, like a one-shot uh, type sample. And the other thing is, when this plays back in sampler, I want to be able to just tap the key and have the full note ring out, just like it does on the motif rack. So I'm gonna turn on the one shot option here. If this is an instrument where you wanna release the key and you want the sound to stop, then you can turn off that one shot option. And then all you have to do at this point is just click sample and wait. And depending on how many samples uh, you are uh, doing, this could take, you know, it could take a few minutes uh, or it could take several hours. So I'm gonna click sample and let's see how long uh, of an, a time estimate this gives us. Oh yeah, and then when you click sample, you also have to give it a name. So I'm gonna call this Motif XS Trance Attack and then click start. So there's the second velocity layer. And then the third velocity layer on C0. And then it's gonna move up to C sharp. And there we go, it's gonna do this for every single key on the keyboard. And it says it's gonna take about 24 minutes. So I'll let the rest of this finish off screen and I'll be right back. Okay, so about, I don't know, 17, 18, 19 minutes later, it took a, a little less time than I thought it would be done. But yeah, it's all done. Um, I probably, in hindsight, I probably didn't need to go up this high. I probably got, could have gone up to like C6 and been fine because some of these upper notes just uh, sound like hi-hats <laughs> up in that range. But I've got the whole instrument sampled. So what you can do at this point is you can just close out your software instrument track, you can close out auto sampler. I'm just gonna go ahead and mute it. Um, so again, we're not getting any signal from the actual motif rack. Now what I can do is I can load up a software instrument and then on that software instrument, I'll just load up the sampler instrument. And to access your auto sampled instruments, you just go up to this top menu here, you go down to auto sampled and you'll see that instrument there. And so what this does, uh, what the auto sampler plugin does is it auto maps all of those samples that we uh, recorded from C0 all the way up to G6. And it's also recorded the three different velocity layers here. So you can see that in, in the mapping. So this is the magic of auto samplers. It kind of does all of the programming work for you. So again, I can just turn off the motif rack. We're not even using it anymore. All of these files, these sample files are stored in Sampler, uh, and I can just arm the track and play the instrument just like any other software instrument. Let's go down another octave. Down another octave. Go up a few octaves. So this, what's really cool here now is you have another level of control over the sample instrument. If you wanna add in some filters, you wanna add in some modulation effects, you can do all of that right here in sampler. And you can also add your own uh, audio effects in Logic. So maybe I wanna add some more ambient reverb on here. This is the black hole reverb from Eventide. And 
then, you know, what another thing you can do is if you want to now use this sampler instrument as sort of the basis of some uh, of your own custom presets, you can certainly do that. You can just assign whatever, um, you know, assign whatever uh, icon you want here. And then you can open up your library, add whatever effects you want on here. And then if I want to save this as, you know, black hole trance or something like that, I just select the track, open the library, click save at the bottom, and then give it a name. So I'll just call this black hole trance plucks. And now under user patches, I have black hole tra trance plucks. And anytime I pull up a software instrument, I can recall that preset with just a couple clicks. <laughs> So there you go. That's how you can use Auto Sampler along with the external instrument plugin to sample your own hardware synthesizers. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.